You may be seated. I want to thank you on behalf of the family for being here today to celebrate the life. And I'm going to take a couple exceptions with this obituary. Just putting that out here right now because it starts out, it says Virginia Nadine West. That ain't right. It's a dink. It's always been dink. As a matter of fact, I had some white church come up to me uh, Sunday at church and they said, uh, What's Dink's real name? And I said, A Virginia. And they said, No, it's not. I said, Yeah, it is. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. Anyway, that went on for a while. But I finally had to convince them that, yeah, that really was her name. So that Virginia was her name. But um, I don't know. She's always been Dink to me. A resident of Henrietta, Oklahoma, passed away Thursday, September 14th, 2023, in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Dink was born August 26, 1924, in Canadian, Oklahoma, to Myrtle Nellie Jones and John James Rhodes. Dink is preceded in death by her husband of 72 years, Ray West, her parents and siblings, John James Rhodes, John William Reese, Bill Rhodes, Winfred Carl Dub Rhodes, Nellie Evelyn Rhodes, Garrett, Clinton Lee Bunk Rhodes, Alyssa May Rhodes Sims, Mabel Jane Rhodes Jackson, Reba Joyce Rhodes Brassfield, and Clyde Elmer Rhodes. Ray and Dink worked hard all their lives. In the early years, they followed the fruit crops through Arizona, California, Oregon, and Washington. Returning to Oklahoma, Dink went to work for Brahms in Tulsa. At Brahms, she became regional manager and opened and managed more than 20 stores. She thought Henrietta was an ideal location for a Brahms store, so after she retired, she persuaded Mr. Brahm to build a store in town. Dink and Ray moved to Henrietta to be close to their family. They had many friends and relatives in town, but none were closer than Virgil and Mabel Jackson. The three Jackson girls, Joanne, Peggy, and Marilyn, were like daughters to Dink. Active in her church, Dink loved all the church members like family and enjoyed working with them in the church kitchen and the food bank. She loved any activity that involved cooking. Henrietta benefited from her apricot pies and her crackling cornbread. She would have fed the world if she could. On Thanksgiving, friends and family would gather at Dink. Sometimes there would be more than 30 people in her small house. If you needed a meal, Dink would happily provide it. Her home was always open and she loved company. Around town, she knew just about everyone and made friends of strangers. She gave a never-ending supply of hugs. That was the next one I had an issue with. She also gave a never-ending supply of kisses. And if you was ever kissed by Dink, it wasn't optional. Just throwing that out there. She grabbed your face and kissed you right on the lips, whether you wanted to or not. So I wanted to throw that in there right there. I thought we needed to, thought we needed to explain that a little bit. Uh, it says she especially loved children, and she was nana to every child she met. Dink was strong, giving, optimistic, active, and fun. She loved puzzles and games and wanted to win. She was the glue that held the family together. Her son Jack is grateful to the many friends and relatives who filled Dink's life after Ray passed away. Those left to cherish Dink's memory are her sister, Ruth Baker, of Oklahoma City, her son, Jack West, and wife, Georgine, of Owasso, four grandchildren, Cynthia Smart of McKinney, Texas, Stephen West of Johnstown, Colorado, Jason West of San Antonio, Texas, Brian West and wife, Stephanie, of Glenwood Springs, Colorado, six great-grandchildren, Meredith Smart of Dallas, Texas, Matthew Smart of Little Rock, Arkansas, Ethan West of Johnstown, Colorado, Trevor West of Johnstown, Colorado, Dylan West of Glenwood Springs, Colorado, Allison West of Glenwood Springs, Colorado, and five great-grandchildren, Kennedy Ray Palmer, Lane Grace Palmer, Reagan James Stewart, Reese Taylor Smart, and Riley Ann Ruth Smart, due in October, and a host of other relatives and dear friends. Would you pray with me? Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we're thankful, Lord, for this day you've given us to come together and celebrate the life of Dink, Lord, with her family and her friends and those who loved her, Lord, and knew her and will miss her. Pray, Lord, she be with us as we go through this time, Lord, that we might fill our, fill our hearts, Lord, with joy for the crown that she's achieved, Lord, and we might fill our lives with, with laughter today because that's just the way Dink would have wanted it. We just pray that she would help us to hold her memory dear, that you would guide us through this time. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I have heard of a land on a faraway strand 
Tis the beautiful home of the soul. Built by Jesus on high, where we never shall die. Tis a land where we'll never grow old, never grow old, never grow old. In a land there will never grow old, never grow old, never. And the life crown is won, and our troubles and trials are o'er. All our sorrow will end, and our voices will blend with the loved ones who've gone on before. Never grow old, never grow old in a land where we'll never grow old, never grow old, never grow old in a land where we'll never grown. <clears throat> there is coming a day when no heartache shall come, no more clouds in the sky, no more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that half be golden shore what a day a glorious day that will be what a day that will be when my jesus i shall see and i look upon his face the one who said be by his grace when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land, what a day, glorious day that will be. There'll be no sorrow there, no more burdens to bear, no more sick no pain, no more parting over there, and forever I will be with the one who died for me. What a day, a glorious day that will be. What a day that will be. When my Jesus I shall see, and I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land, what a day, a glorious day that will be.
set me still all my song shall be nearer my god to thee nearer my god to thee nearer to sky, sun, moon, and stars forgot, upward I fly, still all my song shall be start. Love Dink. Loved her like a mother. She, um, she was funny. She was kind. And if anybody in here hadn't ate something that Dink cooked, just curious, is there a single person in here that hasn't ate something that Dink cooked? See, speaks for itself right there. What else can you say? I was working at the food bank one time, a long time ago, and I brought in this box of some kind of fruit, and honestly, I still don't know what it was. And Dink says, uh, what is that? And I said, well, I'll have a clue. And uh, so she made a cobbler out of it. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, um, there's people God brings into your life that make you better people. And that's the kind of person Dink was. She made you a better person. She um, just had that kind of way about her. She would make you stuff and bring it to you, fried pies, those were good, and deviled eggs by the hundreds. She did those all the time. And whoever made deviled eggs today, I thought that was really good. And the ladies today, if you ate, you got to know that they went whole hog on this, on this, uh, on this dinner tonight. I mean, since this afternoon, it was linen tablecloths and real silverware and real plates. And we generally don't do that at funeral dinners anymore, but, but they said, uh, had to do that for Dink, right? Because you got to go all out. Uh, you got to go all out for Dink. Uh, she, she was a person that, she had to kind of have it her way, but that was all right too. You know, her and Eileen used to cook in the kitchen and where they'd be cooking, you know, and it was so funny. And I would step back and I would just kind of, I just kind of have to laugh, you know, because they each had to do it their way. So what was funny was they'd be making something. So Dink would come along while Yulene wasn't looking. She'd fix it up, stir it, put stuff in it, set the spoon back over there. And then as soon as Dink would leave, Yulene would come back along while Dink wasn't looking. She'd stir it, put some stuff in it, put the spoon back over there. It was comical as could be, you know. Her and Ray were married over 70 years. Most people don't live that long, you know. And they were married that many years, and Dink always said, she said, well, the secret to that is, she goes, me and Mabel go shopping, and, and Ray and Virgil go fishing, you know? So Jackie was saying, it's kind of a story one day, and it's kind of one of her favorite stories, and she said one day that Ray was there, and he kept kind of hinting, you know, you going shopping today, you going shopping, you know? And so it went along for a while. So, so Dink, finally, she looked at him, she says, Ray, she says, it's all right if you want to go fishing. She says, you, you and Virgil go fishing. We'll be all right. <laughs> he, was, he was just waiting for them to leave so that, so that they could go fish, you know. Um, when they were all alive, Virgil and Mabel and Dink and Ray, that was an amazing little corner of the universe uh, right there. And, um, and it was a, kind of an amazing place to go visit. And their relationship and the way they were was, uh, was just unduplicated. And I... And the memories I have of them uh, together, you know, it always amazed me too. And I just got to say this: is that I don't, I don't know how Ray stayed that thin. I've never figured that out. 
I asked him that their whole life. I said, how do you stay that thin, Mary, to drink? Literally, this woman cooks all the time, right? I mean, she's always cooking. I never went to her house. She wasn't cooking something. She said, well, I'm just cooking this. I just made this. I just finished this. I, you know, it was, a, it, was, it was probably not healthy to go over there, to be honest. And, you know, but Ray, man, he was just skin and bones, you know, slender his whole life. And I was looking at those pictures, and I was like, Ray was always that way, you know? And, uh, and anyway, that was kind of neat to, to see that. I, I, um, I have a lot of memories, and Susie, my wife, she always says, you know, you shouldn't make it about you, but this is kind of about me. Um, when you worship with somebody for years and years, and they sit in one place, and when you're a preacher and you set up on Sunday mornings and you look out and you expect people to be uh, where people are supposed to be. And when that person's not there anymore, it kind of is about you a little bit. And Dink was one of those people that was regular as the sunshine. The doors were open. She was here. And towards the end, you'd say, well, how you doing, Dink? She'd say, Just, she says, barely, barely. So I think today uh, I'm barely, and um, but uh, I can't think of her with that laugh and can't think of her with that smiling because there were just a lot of things to laugh about, and that's a good life. In Proverbs 31, it says, An excellent wife who can find her worth is far above jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good or not evil all the days of her life. She looks for wool and flax and works with her hands in delight. She is like merchant ships. She brings her food from afar. She rises also wide a still night and gives food to her household and portions to her maiden. She considers a field and buys it from her earnings. She plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She senses that her gain is good. Her lamp does not go out at night. She stretches her hands out to the distaff and her hands grasp the spindle. She extends her hand to the poor and she stretches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She makes coverings for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates, and when he sets among the elders of the land. It's a verse we use a lot, but it really fits Dink. That's the kind of person uh, that she was. She was giving. She was kind. She was an excellent wife. She was a faithful member of God's household. That's just the kind of way that that she was. I don't know if you could even know all the things that she did. It would be hard for me to stand up here and tell you everything that she did. But, um, you know, I remember going through those eggs. That's nasty business if you've never done that. Uh, we get them for the food bank and they come in and half of them broke, half of them ain't, and cartons are messy. And so it's kind of Dink's mission to sort them eggs. And man, she would sort those eggs by the hundreds and get them all in their little cartons and clean them up. And, she took care of a lot of eggs in her life, you know. It's things like that that she, uh, she got behind and she did. And it was things like that that made her special. We were talking, you know, how many funeral dinners have, uh, have has she done? How many dinners has she made? I, I don't know. I, I don't, we don't keep track of it. I don't, I don't know how many. A lot. A uh, hundred, over a hundred, hundreds probably. Um, you know, stuff like that, to give your time, to give it yourself. I, I want to tell you, I do a lot of funerals, more than, I, more than I ever want to do. And I do a lot of funerals for people that are Dink's age. And you know how many people come to her funeral? Three or four. You know what they say? They say, well, they outlived everybody they knew, right? They outlived their family. They outlived everybody they knew. But Dink was 99. I was sure she was going to make it to 100. I was pulling for her. I was sure she's going to make 100. And you know, we look in this auditorium today, and there's not three or four people. You know, sometimes people think you can retire from life. You can stop what you're doing, sit back in your own corner, mind your own world, don't worry about anybody else, think you put in your time. You know, Dink's an example that that's not how to live your life. You know, God is a God for all ages, a God when we're old, a God when we're young, and that we don't retire from his service or from other people or for doing good to people around us. And if we, if we fail to give, 
if we fail to live a selfless life, then we fail essentially to do what God would have us to do. It's a statement that was made, and I can't tell you, I can't quote who, quote, can't quote who said it, but it said, truthfully, you only keep what you give away. And that's true in life. We're so focused on keeping for ourselves and storing up for ourselves that we forget the only true things we really keep are what you give away. On the day that they wheel you out for the last time, what you have, the name, the, the letters behind your name, what you have, what you possess, where you live, is irrelevant. Doesn't make any difference. There's only two things that matter when you breathe your last breath. That's your relationship with God and the people that you leave behind. Everything else is irrelevant. It doesn't matter. And the truth is, is that at 99 years old, Dink left this. And a lot of times at 99 years old, people leave just almost nothing. There's a lesson in that for you, for me, for us, that life doesn't end until we breathe our last breath. Life doesn't end as long as there's a tomorrow, as long as there's hope, life doesn't end. And I believe that that's something that we can learn from what she has to say. Solomon in Ecclesiastes, he says, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. For there is no activity or planning or knowledge or wisdom in Sheol where you are going. Do it with all your might. If you're going to make deviled eggs, make good deviled eggs. If you're going to sort eggs, do a good job of doing that. If you're going to open Brahms stores, do a good job. Of I remember Dink when she was doing Brahm stores. I mean, and they loved her because she was all in. I mean, she was 100% about that. I mean, it was amazing what she did and the way she would be in a store when you would go in there. And I remember that years ago before I ever really had a relationship with her whatsoever. I remember going into those stores and I knew, and you knew Dink. You knew she was there. You knew what she was doing. She's right in the middle of it. Yeah, she was starting those stores. She was managing those stores. But don't make any, make no mistake about it. She was scooping ice cream too. I mean, that's just the kind of person that she was. And, and that's something that I always admired about her is that she would get in there and do those things. It says, cast your bread on the surface of the waters and you will find it. After many days, divide your portion to seven, even to eight, for you do not know what misfortune may occur on the earth. If the clouds are full, they pour out rain upon the earth, and whether a tree falls towards the south or towards the north, whatever the tree falls where it lies, right? Truth is, Solomon, wisest man ever, he says, cast your bread on the water, and it's going to come back. What you give is the only thing you really keep. Everything else doesn't really matter. There's a lesson, a lesson in life for that. And I think that Dink lived that, and I think she taught us that. I know that she helped to teach me that. Like I said, there's people that God brings into your life that make you, that make you better people. You know, it's sad. We've been sad all week. Um, seems a little empty to me, and will seem empty to me for a while. And I think it's times like that that we're sorrowful. We, uh, we need to understand that as a Christian, we live our whole life for this. We live our whole life for this time, the time when we got to leave, the time when we got to go meet God. And Dink lived her life that way. I always said, if you're a faithful Christian, the greatest glory you can have is to walk into a Sunday, walk into church one Sunday, and they wheel you out the next fact is to be faithful unto death it says and you'll receive a crown of life which Jesus will award to those on that day and Dink was faithful unto death you know Jesus my favorite passage a lot of you here are members here you know me you know my favorite passage and it's at times like this that I go to it when Jesus was with his apostles in his last hours of his life and he didn't know I always think well what would you tell somebody right what would you tell somebody in the last hours of your life um, you know, it's funny because I know what Dink and Eulene would say. They would say, you know, somebody's got to sort those legs, and I'm going to choose somebody now, you know, because that's how they were. They were always thinking about what was going to happen. I know, um, but what would you tell somebody? And Jesus says, uh, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it was not so, I would have told you so. I go there to prepare a place so that where I am, there you may be also. You know, I don't know what eternity is like. I really don't know what heaven looks like. No, don't have a clue. Don't even have a good idea to tell you. But I can promise you one thing. Mabel and Virgil and Ray and Dink are together again. 
and uh, I just hope they're going fishing, right? You know, we had Jackie give us a song list, and, and uh, if you ever led singing here, you know Dink's favorite song. It was 1005, Beautiful Star of Bethlehem. Every time you led singing, that was the song she wanted you to lead. And every time you led it, boy, she'd light up, she'd light up, and she'd really start singing with you. And she would always say, that's my favorite song, favorite song. So we're going to sing that before we close and dismiss with a prayer. And um, Dink, uh, see you when. Before we <clears throat> sing this, you know, like Rick said, she would always say, oh, I want you to lead that song at my funeral. That's one of my favorite songs. And she always sat back over there in the corner. <clears throat> and I got to where I would kind of play a game. <laughs> I would uh, lead that song, and I would intentionally skim over her and not make eye contact. Because the soon as I made eye contact with her, she was right there, pointing right at your face. You know, just like, like yeah. But, but I got to where I would say, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm going to avoid eye contact. You couldn't avoid it for very long, but every time, she had, she had reflexes like a cat on that. <laughs> truly, truly be missed. But we are so happy for her. We're sad for y'all, but we are happy for her. O oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shining afar through shadow dim, giving a light for those who long have gone, and guiding the wise men on their way into the place where Jesus lay. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. O oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine upon us until the glory Dawn. Oh, give us thy light to light the way into the land of perfect day. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Oh, beautiful star, the hope of rest, for the redeemed, the good, the blessed. Yonder in glory when the crown is won. For Jesus is now that star divine, brighter and brighter he will shine. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, guide upon us until the glory dawn. Oh, give us thy light to light the way into the land of perfect day. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. with me. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this day, Lord. We're thankful for this family. We're thankful for those gathered here, Lord, to think about the memory of Dink and what she meant to us in our lives. We pray, Lord, that we'd carry that with us and we'd keep the good and the joyful and the happy things and we would keep those in our heart, Lord. We just pray that you'd be with us through the rest of this afternoon, through the trip to the cemetery for your safety, Lord, your guidance. Pray for this family, Lord, for their comfort, and for our church here, Lord, as we lose a dear, dear friend and sister in Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.